Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos Week 5 Waiver Wire Show. I said I wasn't going to scream, but I couldn't help myself. I am excited for the Week 5 Waiver Wire Show. Alex, in the weekend that went to shit, what did you need to do to feel the full team this weekend? I had to, I had to get creative. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, Fitzpatrick was started over Big Ben, and uh, I have Same. no idea who I played over Connor in a different league. And yeah, it it was a disaster for for commissions. Hopefully, uh, people were equitable about figuring out and letting people drop players if they needed to or whatever. You know, number one, fantasy football needs to be fair and fun. And if it's not either of those, then like, what are you doing? I, I get that you're competitive, but. It it was a crappy situation uh, Thursday, Friday, uh, or even Wednesday after we recorded. Like everything, you know, we rec- we talked about all these games. We didn't think that Kansas City was even, or you know, Kansas City Patriots was even going to happen. Um, it's just crazy what what went down. Hopefully, everybody continues to test negative. Again, negativity is key, uh, but positive attitudes are a plus. Um, Negatives are positives. I will say though, I would I would like to celebrate uh, in our league that it took three games and three and a half quarters, but my quarterback finally threw a touchdown. Hey! So I'm off the schneid there. Thank you, Jared Goff, for waiting three and a half quarters before finding Cooper Cup. But uh, yeah, hey, I finally got a touchdown on my quarterback, and I'm 0 and 4. So ready to Look go. Look at you on the board no less yeah i'm uh i'm uh i've never started i've never had a worse start to a fantasy football season than this year same and i'm talking about it on a fantasy football podcast it's absolutely embarrassing yeah between dealing with Cortland sutton debo samuel george kittle injuries i've also had to deal with the covid losses of james connor big ben uh benny snell but that's really of no consequence and potentially clyde edwards elaire all on one team so that's just the whole gambit of a miracle why my team is somehow one and two hopefully i pull off another win if the uh, pats kc game actually gets gets done but we'll see we're hoping for negative tests hey Hey, at least you have james robinson right i do yeah the savior of my team it is strange though for that pats kc game it is a little odd that only cam has tested positive out of all of the players, it's like the one key guy that drives that entire offense that somehow was able to come down with it. But yeah, and you know that he's come in contact with a bunch of people. I, I saw that they were flying two different planes out to Kansas City. I got so two one, planes. One for co- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's great. So one one with all the COVID pe- potential COVID people. And like, we all know. Well. If I had to make an educated guess, I would I would go ahead and say that at least there's going to be somebody that's COVID positive on that one plane that's coming into contact with Cam based on how we know this thing, or at least it seems to be spreading. Neither yeah. here nor there. Waivers. Let's do it. All right, let's get into these waivers. So we're going to hit it with. Uh, let's we're going to start with some injury based ones just because that's what everybody's priority is going to be. Uh, you got. Nick Chubb and Austin Eckler going down with injury, not returning. Eckler's looks to be substantially more serious than Chubb's does, but who knows? Um, Not technically eligible, but because of the injury to Eckler, we are going to talk about Josh Kelly. He is currently rostered in 57% of leagues, which is why I say he's not technically eligible. However, he's going to be the the primary back there, unless he keeps fumbling, which he continued to do this week. Um, nobody. Although the, I, I will say that that fumble wasn't actually his fault. It was the quarterback that kind of stuck it on his chest. So yeah. to me, that was a coaching thing. They should have just taken a knee and gone in it for at halftime. But Herbert kind of botched the. So it wasn't technically Kelly's fault. But again, that's two and two weeks. So something to be concerned about. Yeah. No, and nobody could run at all in this game against the Bucs. I was a little little surprised not surprised that they you know i know that they have a very stout defense however but 
Josh Kelly, nine rushing attempts for seven yards. I mean, I, I was not anticipating seven yards. Uh, he did have three targets, caught all three for 26, which is contributing. Um, that Eckler pass volume is going to do wonders for Josh Kelly. You have to start him everywhere if you got him. Uh, Eckler spotted post game mm-hmm. with crutches and a brace to help him uh, get around. He has a hyperextended knee and hamstring injury. MRI slated for Monday, uh, expected to miss multiple weeks. So not not great. It looked bad. He he was getting tackled, immediately came up. Uh, I believe it was his left leg. He wasn't putting any weight on. And then he was getting tackled by like three dudes on one leg. Um, and then when he got to the side, they picked him up, took him to the sideline. He couldn't even get in the cart because he was in so much pain. It, no. it looked really bad. I, he's going to be out at least a month would be my guess. And then uh, let's talk about their other running back there. Justin Jackson didn't fare any better than Josh Kelly against the Bucks. Six rushes for nine yards, two catches for 12 in week Not four. Nice. No, he's only, he is, however, very eligible to be added. He's only rostered in about 9% of leagues. Um, let's go back to Josh Kelly. If you don't have, uh, assuming Josh Kelly is eligible, how much fab are you spending on Josh Kelly? Uh, at least 50% of whatever you have left. Yeah. I mean, he's usable even when Eckler's around. I would say at least 50% of fab should be owned in 10 man or larger leagues. Um, even eight man for the next month. Um, Justin mm-hmm. Jackson, how much fab are you spending on Justin Jackson? I would only go like 15%, 20%. Yeah, that seems a little high to me. Um, if you're desperate, but I will say that there's not that many. Yeah, there's not that many people to even be picking up this week, in my opinion. So if you're like super desperate, I guess he's, you know, he's technically probably one of the top running backs to pick up this week. Um, obviously, besides Joshua Kelly. Um, honestly, I wouldn't go more than than 5% on him because I, I think you can get him for that. Um, if somebody's going to go more than that, then. Congrats to them. I would go at least 10 because I think he's got to be looking for double looking at double digit touches every week. And so I, I mean, the way that Herbert checks down, I don't know. I, I, I would tack a little bit more onto Justin Jackson than that. I would do at least 10%, 15% if you really want a good chance of getting him. Um, let's move on to our other injury of the week. Chubb, Nick Chubb. Um, Kind of an interesting injury there. He has a he was rolled up on. He has an MRI. He had an MRI on Monday. Knees injured. He didn't return to the game. Uh, Ernest Johnson went thirteen for ninety five after Chubb went down. Yeah, Ernest Johnson, Kareem Hunt, who <laughs> was limited during the week, had eleven for seventy one and two. Two scores. So you got Chubb going six for 43 injured, does not return. The Browns play the Colts on Sunday. How much fab are you out here spending on to Ernest Johnson? Nothing. What? He I, had more touches what? than Hunt. So like. No, I know that. You had 100 rushing so yards. One, the, Col- the Colts defense is very good. Like, exceptionally good. Uh, They shut down the Bears today. Kareem Hunt is by far and away the guy there. I don't think DeErnest Johnson is going to be doing anything going for... I mean, it... So, we're full disclosure, we're taping this late Sunday night. We don't actually know how hurt Chubb is. If Chubb's out for the season, then, yeah, I would spend a little bit on DeErnest Johnson... But if he's not, and it's only a one or two week thing, then a couple bucks, no, nothing more than that. I, and I am a save my sauce guy. I'm not going to spend something on to Ernest Johnson. If you have Chubb and you need a replacement for Chubb, why not pick up the guy that had more rushing attempts than Kareem Hunt, who wasn't Nick Chubb? They I, were way ahead and they're and they were trying to keep Hunt healthy. Okay, I'll give you that. But okay, all right, fine. I'd go five to ten so percent. 
I would rather save my money and wait Spend for a Josh Kelly catastrophic or... injury at, at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. I, I just don't think like it's one of those things where I would prefer to save it than nickel and die myself down to where I can't get somebody when I really need them later. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that really does it for me for running backs. Um, we just between all of the, I don't know, the, 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 the bye week shenanigans out of nowhere and postponing and things. It's just, mm. I don't know, who knows? Hopefully, hopefully you guys had some flexibility put in place and some extra bench spots and those things to get through that. But, uh, I am excited to talk. Yeah. One, one key thing that I'm so glad that we did was get rid of the two running back two wide receiver format in our league and just go to one, one and one and add flex players because otherwise you'd be starting some crap. Um, Oh, I started some crap. That was really saving. No, I know, but I'm just saying like it could have been even worse had you been forced to put in another RB play another position. All right. uh, Let's take it from the top here. Um, not spotlighting him as a uh, waiver wire pickup because again, he's not eligible as he's more uh, rostered in more than 50% of leagues. I will just say that Alex was wrong again about uh, Justin Jefferson <laughs> who had another five catch hundred plus yard week. Alex, you suck. You're wrong about receivers. By the way, Alan Lazard, who you were wrong about uh, is currently wide receiver seven. Um, so good job on you for picking out yeah, how, these how wide long receivers is he out for? the rest of the season. But still, he was a stud. I bet he could be out <laughs> for the rest of the season and still finish with more points than Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, my goodness. It's possible. Yeah, it's very right. possible. Moving into these wide receiver pickups. Uh, I'm starting with my boy T Higgins off the top here. Uh, four for seven targets. For 77 yards, also added a 13 yard run in uh, Sunday's 33 25 win over the Jags. Uh, he only had 13 yards and one target less than Tyler Boyd this week. Um, yeah, absolutely priority ad That's for That's really me. good. He's rostered in only 25% of leagues. Joe Burrow currently on pace for almost 4,500 yards and 25 touchdowns. Just absolutely banana stats out of the gate. Um, He had nine targets last week. You were seeing that additional snap percentage. If T Higgins, again, only rostered in 25% of leagues, how much fab are you spending on T Higgins? Nah, I don't think I'd throw more than 10% at him personally. You don't. This is why we don't get guys. I don't want him. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't like move the, it doesn't move the radar for me. If I have to spend more than that to get him, I don't really want him. I think he's a league winner. I think he absolutely has league winner potential. You're seeing increased snap shares. You're seeing uh, targets that are right up there with Tyler Boyd. Who's a fringe wide receiver one four for 77 and a 13 yard rush. They're, they're putting him in the rush. They're using him to run the ball too. Like they're just trying to feed the ball to him. They're going to be down in every game. I get Burrow's going to throw a bazillion passes. You're wrong about T Higgins. So I don't know if they uh, see for the first time today, they were actually balanced or mostly balanced from a run pass standpoint, which is why Joe Mixon finally went off. Joe Mixon, new uh, life. Yeah, free free Joe Mixon. We called for it last week, and he was freed. Um, I mean, AJ Green's still there, um, and he's still on the field a ton. The corpse I know of he's AJ not Green good. is there. Hey, you liked him more than Boyd going into the season. If we're gonna keep calling out Alex is wrong all the time, but here we go. I just wasn't um, sure. What I just we were don't. Getting. It's because he hadn't played for a year and a half, and it looks like it. Yes, just, it does. If if AJ Green is not going to be on the field, then sure, go fifteen percent on him. Um, but AJ Green's still there, assuming that he's going to, as he put it, get back into football shape or figure out how to play with his new ankle or whatever he's calling it. Then I would assume he's going to 
pick up his production toward you know the longer we go on in the season and if that happens then between him and boyd is there even enough for a t higgins i don't know um that's why i just am not super interested in throwing a ton of money at him I would throw at least 15% at T Higgins. I want him on every team, everywhere he's available. I think the guy's a stud, probably a lock. I would say top 30 rest of the season, but uh, I'm, I'll, I'll throw this gladly. I will gladly throw that on the board bet too. Fine. If, him and Jay Jeff, to maybe. say that. That's him fine. And, they're, they're not rest of season, the top 30. Um. All right, let's move on. Our next receiver, Zach Pascal. Uh, this one is a little bit of a deeper one. You Pascal. He had eight targets, three for fifty-eight. Led the team in targets. Campbell and Pittman out. I think he's a viable flex play weekly candidate to lead the team in targets. T. Y. Hilton looks absolutely washed. Uh, he's only rostered in two percent of leagues. I would spend 5% of fab on getting Zach Pascal just because I think that that offense is kind of trash in the passing game. And once they get to the inside the red zone, I think they just kind of turn around and hand it off to, to Jonathan Taylor. Um, I don't yeah, know. Or throw it up for Mo Alley Cox, right? I, yeah, there you go. I, Another I one catch, right on 13 the, yard yeah, touchdown. Yeah. I but. know. Hey, as long as you're catching touchdowns, it doesn't matter. I um I agree with you. Um, Ty does not look the same. They were also going up a really uh, against one of the better pass defenses in the NFL and the Bears. Um, but the fact that you know it seems like whoever's on the field, uh, like I don't know if Ty is taking the number one cornerback and Philip Rivers is just like, well, I'm just going to target whoever's got the number two cornerback. Um, but it seems like Phil is willing to throw to whoever the other wide receiver is on the field other than T.Y., which is kind of strange. Maybe just because he knows that T.Y. is going to drop the ball. Okay. Uh, moving on. Wow. Yeah, we're... <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> is is T... So, so uh, just real quick, I mean, going into this week, T.Y. Hilton was wide receiver 71. Uh, in half PPR leagues, he's got 7.3, 4.3, 6.7, and 4.4 points. Are you dropping T.Y. Hilton? So like uh, as a if if you were to say, hey, I'm putting a bid in on I'm putting a bid in on Pascal, uh, would you drop T. Y. Hilton to pick up Zach Pascal? Why would you ask me that? Um I don't because you gotta drop you always you always have to drop somebody to pick somebody up. So are are you going to drop T. Y. Hilton, who potentially you took what in round five, six? Uh, maybe maybe even a little bit earlier than that um, to pick up Zach Pascal. I am not dropping T. Y. Hilton for Zach Pascal because of okay. blind alliance to a former allegiance Pro Bowl. I pledge allegiance to T. Y. Hilton. <laughs> Uh, of the Indianapolis maybe, Colts. Maybe like I would maybe after like a week or two more if it stays up, I'm just hoping it comes together for him. I don't know what's wrong. It just it's not fun to watch. But okay. Yeah, I mean just just something to keep in mind. I I think it's probably relatively close um and like from that standpoint, if you're not willing to drop T.Y. Hilton and T.Y. Hilton isn't very good, do you really want to spend like you're not going to spend more than 5% of fab on on getting Pascal on your team? No. He's probably just going to sit on your bench. Um, and so for that reason, you know, a lot of these guys that we talk about, I just don't want to spend on them because if I'm not going to play them, then I don't want to allocate resources to them that potentially that I'm just going to drop next week. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're putting in claims on some of these guys. Our next receiver, um, a rookie, LaVisca Chenault Jr., 5 for 86 on six targets, also had a rushing attempt for five yards, 11 and a half fantasy points this week and half PPR scoring, rostered in 28% of leagues. How much fab are you spending on LaVisca Chenault Jr., and is it more than zero? Somebody spent like 10%, 10, 12% fab in our league last week to get him. Um, 
and then dropped but, him and now he's a free agent again um yeah. It's a good question. So, so far this year, uh, through four weeks, 12.2, 8.7, 5.9, 11.6. His worst week was when DJ Chark was not on the field. Um, and his best weeks is when DJ Chark has been on the field. Um, I just, uh, I don't know. He's, he's kind of an interesting guy. Uh, seems like they want to use him in multiple facets. Um, he's somebody to roster. Um, I think he's tough to put like, you know, two weeks ago when you're looking at Thursday night football and Minshew is thrown all over the field and you're like, all right, I'm, I'm getting in on, on Chenault. And then he puts up 5.9. So everybody's snake bitten on him. He's still useful, um, potentially down in the flex. He kind of reminds me a little bit of like Tariq Cohen. Um, I, and I know he's more of a wide receiver, but if you think about, um, about the way that the Bears use Cohen was, hey, here's a couple carries, here's a couple targets. Um, so he potentially has some flex upside. Um, it's possible that somebody goes out and bids on him again this week. Um, again, he's currently rostered in just about 28% of leagues. I uh, This is probably a zero bid guy for me. Yeah, my thing is, I'm not as much of a believer in the volume. Like when I put Chenault against T Higgins, I look at how much more passing I foresee in the Cincinnati offense, how many more touchdowns I see and game script and all those things. I'm just not a huge fan of LaVisca's outlook, I guess. Um, The rushing attempts are huge and, you know, additional touches for him that a lot of other receivers won't see, but I'm just not, Sure. I don't know. I think he has probably maybe like a five point. I think he has a low well, a medi moderate floor and kind of a low ceiling. Whereas Higgins I see as more of a moderate floor, but a higher, much higher ceiling based on the volume and you know Burrow's passing rate. But I would I would only go like five percent of fab on him. But yeah, just put in a zero, but if you get him, you're happy. If you don't, meh, whatever. I mean, somebody's getting somebody that's averaging five targets a week, um, maybe a carry or two tacked on that. Um, so eh. He's he's a he should be rostered, I think. Um, but again, he's just one of those guys where you're not gonna play him unless you're kind of in a tight spot to uh figure out bye weeks or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move on to Marquez Valdez Scantling, 17 targets through three weeks. Uh, Again, we are filming this Sunday night late, so we don't know how the Monday night game went. Uh, He did have four for 96 and a a score in week one, three for 64 on seven targets in week two. Kind of disappeared last week. That was the Alan Lazard show. Um, However, as we stated... Lazard is out for the season due to core muscle surgery after his career game. Um, However, Aaron Rodgers, from 2008 to 2016, his wide receiver to the second wide receiver on his team has an average finish as wide receiver 20 uh, and a median finish of wide receiver 20. Um, Marquez Valdez Scantling is only rostered in about 40% of leagues. You have Lazard out of the way. You have Devonte Adams in and out with injury. I think MVS should be added in probably all 12 team leagues. I mean, potentially even 10 teamers. Um, how much fab are you spending to try and go get MVS? So just for clarification real quick, Alan Lazard, they don't know if he's actually out for the season. I think we're making the assumption that he is, but like I'm reading something on PackerNews.com. Shout oh, okay. out to those guys, whoever they are. I, I was just going like off road. They would probably be saying about us. No, yeah, I know. Uh, they just said it's four to six weeks, but um, for wide receivers, it could be substantially longer than that. Either way, it's going to be at least halfway through the season before Lazard would even think about coming back at minimum. Um, Marquez Valdez Scantling, um, maybe a couple bucks. Um, it depends on what Devonte Adams looks like. Um, if he's even playing, um, which it sounds like he's going to, um, 
I don't a couple dollars, five, five, five percent of fab, maybe. The thing is, is I actually think that he probably blows up against the Falcons because I think that could just be a gun show. So I think because their are gonna, defense is terrible. Yeah. So I think that that could I if he blows up, I think people are going to be spending like 20, 30 percent of fab on him. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't spend that much because he's so hot and cold. But um, yeah, I would probably go. Yeah, he's a lot like 10. Will Fuller. Yeah. Like. Just, you know, yes. somebody that could go off, but then, or maybe, maybe like a Deshaun Jackson guy where, where he's either going to have two catches or like five catches for 140 yards and two touchdowns or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, he's, he's a boomer bus guy. And if you like rolling with boomer bus guys, then have fun. Um, I prefer to have higher floors and that's not the type of player that he is. Speaking of Deshaun Jackson, nice seg you. Segway. Um, have you ever ridden a Segway? I hear they're fun. No. Um. I f- well, I'm like six seven. Would it- so with my yes, like, center ladies gravity, and gentlemen. That's that be- right. Uh, I think that we've been hiding it very well. But Alex Krogh is extremely tall. So like. If I had to like bend over to like grab the handle, like <laughs> I don't look ridiculous. Like, on that I don't. <laughs> yeah, like do they make extra large mo- like extra extra Ex- large models extendo handles for me to like? Yeah, so I can be, like it's almost like a you know like a a Harley that has like the super high handles that you can kind of like oh lean back God. and. Like if if that's the case, then I'm in. But uh, no, never been on a Segway. Oh man! All right, let's see it into Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, rostered in only 14 percent of leagues. We thought he could make his appearance this week. He did not. The Eagles still look like absolute hot garbage at the receiver position, uh, other than Greg Ward, who I also don't really want. Um, what about Travis Fulgham? Okay. Um, are you spending any fab or on Alshon? Or are you just trying to sneakily add him before he's activated? Uh, I think the time to do that was probably last week. Um, I I think every league that I'm in, I either have him already stashed on my roster or he's sitting on an IR slot somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I think he should be added. I think he's clearly going to be the best wide receiver in that offense once he's healthy. Um, even though it might only be for a week until he's got the piano on his back again. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if, uh, like, yeah, I, I think he should be added. I think you should throw a dollar or two at him just to, if he's in your league, add him this week, try to get him. I don't think people will be paying attention to him. He has zero points. He hasn't played yet. So when people go in and sort by highest point totals to put their waiver wire selections in from the previous week, he won't show up. Um, so I, I think you can probably bid a dollar and, and get him in your league. That brings us to one of our Sunday night plays, Brandon Ayuk. We talked about him on last week's waiver show uh, as a potential ad. Our one caveat to that was what does the workload look like when Debo comes back? Well, Debo came back. The workload certainly took a hit. He only had three targets, one catch, four yards. However, he did have a 38-yard a rushing attempt and a score. The guy just looks like a playmaker. I'm really excited to see what Jimmy Garoppolo does with him um, once he comes back, hopefully next week, uh, so we don't have to watch another week of C.J. Beathard, Nick Mullins breathe life into that offense, although it did miracles to have for Nick Mullins and George Kittle, man. Like that 30-point display was fantastic. I still can't believe there's like even when even when CJ Beathard was at Iowa, I still couldn't believe that it just said beat hard on the back of his jersey. <laughs> I was just never able to get over that. And I I don't I don't understand how he's actually playing in the NFL and it just says beat hard on the back of his jersey. Uh, Brandon Ayuk bl- first first receiver since the 1970 merger to have a rushing touchdown in two of his first three games. He's rostered in more than 25% of leagues. I'm spending like $2 on Ayuk and that's it. And I'm adding him to the end of my bench and I'm probably not playing him 
until he shows week to week consistency. Like I'm, I don't want to start Brandon Ayuk. I think uh, I think we were concerned about the the Debo Samuel impact, but really it was probably the George Kittle impact, right? Who had 15 catches on 15 targets. Uh, if, yeah. if Kittle's healthy, I don't think he can play Ayuk. No, no, and like obviously, I, and so yeah, if you can, if you want to roster him for zero dollars, and you have somebody to drop on your roster, like maybe like a Jordan Howard or something like that, that you just don't want to look at anymore, then maybe that be makes dropped sense. Everywhere. Um, Hey, be nice to my guy. Um, but yeah, uh, I think with a healthy George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk is borderline rosterable. Um, let's go to tight end here. Uh, my priority, if you are dealing with Janu Smith shenanigans, potentially missing additional games, if more people test positive, um, they're already talking about potentially canceling next week's Titan Titans or not canceling postponing next week's Titans game. Uh, I would prioritize Dalton Schultz. Uh, he had four catches for 72 yep. yards, another touchdown, eight targets against the Browns, 28 targets through four weeks. I think he's a top 12 tight end the rest of the way. I wouldn't be surprised if he finishes top eight, maybe. Um, he has more targets than Mark Andrews, Noah Fant, who is currently tight end one, and Tyler Higby. Like extreme volume coming for Dalton Schultz. I would spend like 30% of Fab to try and get the guy. He is rostered in about a if third the Cow- of leagues. If the Cowboys are Yeah, if the Cowboys are gonna keep throwing 60 times a game and Dak is gonna throw for 500 yards, just by default. He's going to have value. That defense looks period. Like, like trash. Period. They're, yeah, they're awful. They give 49 to the Browns. By the way, did call Odell coming yes. through. Did call Jarvis Landry being. So I, I don't want to take a, a victory lap on that. But if you like now, it's almost like, hey, are the Browns good? I guess we don't really know. But Baker's still 165, 165 yards this week. And they still put up 49 points. It's unbelievable. Insane. Um, so Dalton Schultz. I mean, he's probably a top top 10 tight end the rest of the way. I don't know how he can't be. Um, so when it comes to when it comes to tight ends, it's tough. I think one, you need to look around your league and see who has, you know, make sure one that all the tight ends are spread out and then figure out who your competition is from a like who else would be going after a tight end probably somebody that started Jimmy Graham last week maybe somebody that has a Gesicki on their team maybe a Hunter Henry on their team potentially um, and just try to figure out hey how much do I think I need to get this guy I think it's dangerous going more than 20% again because tight ends are such a like they're such a niche to bid on because your only competitions like maybe three or four guys that would be bidding on him versus the entire league bidding on him. Um, So for that reason, I would discount him. So for that reason, I would discount how much I would need to spend on him a little bit because theoretically you don't have to spend as much because there's less people bidding. Yeah. And Jimmy Graham, we mentioned last week kind of disappeared um, this week. They just, the bears were never really in the red zone against the Colts. I think, Maybe he gets back on track next week, although they play the Bucks, so I would be hesitant to fire up Jimmy Graham then either. Um, but this brings me to my stream of the week. Stream of the week. Uh, my stream of the week is Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. Through four weeks, he is completing the highest percentage of passes in, in his entire career at 74%. They play the Falcons in two of the next four games Mm -hmm. who are including this coming week who are giving up on average 33 plus points to the quarterback position. Just absolutely the tastiest matchup in the league by far. He's only he's rostered in less than 10% of leagues. I would 
spend some fab to get him if you're desperate at QB. I mean, I don't know if you're the guy that's trying to start Big Ben, Cam, anybody that could potentially... If, Anybody that is supposed to, or, well, what next week is the the Titans play what the Bills, so Josh Allen if he if his game gets postponed maybe or we actually I believe we get into bye weeks as well, so if you're hurting for a quarterback I would absolutely uh, have no problem starting uh, Teddy Bridgewater and potentially even holding on to him because uh, he could be. A nice little spot start here for the next couple weeks. What uh, what do you think about Teddy? Yeah, especially with uh, Christian McCaffrey not not there, right? Where it seems you know when when Christian is is in the game, they're they're cool with just giving turn around, giving him the ball, and letting him score. Um, provided he's out for both of those Falcons games, I've not really heard an update on his eye ankle sprain. Um, now that we're we're two weeks past that, um, I. Uh, yeah, I, I like Teddy B. I started him a couple of weeks to start the season and he didn't do much because he wasn't scoring touchdowns. But yeah, um, that changed changed today. He had two passing touchdowns. He added a rushing touchdown. Um, so, yeah, very serviceable, especially with the Falcons coming up where uh, their defense is awful. Well, that does it for our waiver portion of the show. Alex, we are going to be talking about... Uh... Some guys that maybe they've been held on to for too long. They are, uh, they're really, you know, just weighing you down and you just need to potentially let them go. So this is our take a load off. Who do you got? Yeah. I So I asked you kind of before the show, because there wasn't like that much to talk about from a waiver wire standpoint, at least. From outside my perspective, of the few just main really... injuries, T Higgins, but yeah. So I just wanted to run down some players that are rostered in the league that we're in and be like, hey, should we be dropping these guys to pick up anybody that we've talked about? Or um, like, there's some genuine, like, why are these people even rostered? Um, I'll start with Josh Gordon, um, who still has not played. Um, he, they there, haven't there even really ruled on whether or not on he him. can be reinstated. Yeah, like... Yeah. Bro, currently no. rostered in 2.1% of leagues. Uh, I, I would agree with you. He should be dropped. If if anything, he's not going to crack the DK Lockett combination that they have there and provide a significant amount of usage even when he is reinstated. So that's somebody I would definitely drop. Uh Let's see here. Devontae Freeman. He uh, is currently rostered in 56% of leagues. He had 11 carries, 33 yards uh, on Sunday against the Rams. Four catches, 35 yards. 8.8 points in uh, half PPR. Um, Seems like he would be useful going forward. I I think he has to be rostered. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the workload's only going to get better. I think he absolutely has to be rostered everywhere. Okay. Somebody else in our league has John Ross the third. He has not had a catch since week um since week one. What okay, we need to look at maybe some higher roster. Like what's John Ross the third's roster percentage? It has to be low. Point nine. Yeah, okay. Well that guy but is I'm just, just trash. Okay. Uh Philip because... Lindsay, currently rostered in sixty one percent of leagues. Should be held on to. I think he probably splits work. He just is coming back from injury. Okay. Uh, Tony Pollard. He's a lottery ticket. You 20, gotta hold on to Tony. 20, 20, 26% of leagues. Um, Rob Gronkowski. 60, oh gosh. 69.9% of leagues he's rostered in. What, what a coincidence. Nice. Well... With uh, with OJ Howard going down and missing a lot of time, maybe Gronk sees more work. Maybe, but, yeah. They they had a touchdown to Cameron Bray today, I believe. Um, and and Gronk is still on the on the the just he's not good. I think he should probably be dropped. He should definitely not be rostered in seventy percent of. I leagues. got a couple for uh, you, Christian okay. Kirk. 
Christian Kirk currently rostered in 45% of leagues. Currently wide receiver 116. No. Get rid of him. <laughs> Drop All him. Right. Drop him right now. Uh, Duke Johnson, your boy preseason. Uh, rostered in about 30% of leagues. Currently running back 103. Uh, he can probably be dropped. The The thing with that is, is, I mean, David Johnson stayed healthy so far. I just don't. I mean, Duke has done nothing. All right. The whole offense has really done nothing. Yeah. And I mean, same with this next guy, Larry J- or Larry Fitzgerald. Rostered in about a third of all leagues. Currently wide receiver 86. I yeah, would, he can be dropped. Uh, I would cut him. I would have cut him yeah, yesterday. Yeah, he's getting like one, one catch a week. That's a, that Cardinals offense, I believe Kyler Murray set an NFL record today for uh, fewest passing yards with 24 plus completions. Wow. So that like they're just like dinking and dunking all over the place. Maybe maybe it wasn't an NFL record, but it was definitely the the least amount of passing yards since like 2004 or something like that. Um, and he's on the list twice uh, over the last two years in that offense, which is which is kind of crazy. Um, would would how about Brandon Cooks? Uh, he's rostered in 74 percent of leagues, and uh, going into this week, he was wide receiver 70. He um he literally had zero today he had three targets i would struggle to drop brandon cooks uh he's been so good for the last like four to last five years i just don't understand what's going wrong i would give him one more week i i don't know i would 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 you would you drop brandon cooks to pick up t higgins yes and justin jefferson both i think i would too yeah, I agree with you. Both. Uh, Matt Breida. And let's also talk about Jordan Howard while we're here. Uh, Breida is rostered in a yeah. third of leagues, currently running back 80. Jordan Howard is obviously considerably higher. Uh, however, he's completely touchdown dependent. Are you dropping either one of them to go get Justin Jackson, Josh Kelly? <sighs> Pro- well, yes, for sure, Josh Kelly. Um, the Dolphins are just, you can't really figure out what they're doing. I mean, Gaskins is the guy there. Um, 10 carries, 40 yards, uh, this week, Breda, three carries, Jordan Howard, two carries for two yards. Unbelievable. Uh, Breda did have three catches for 39 yards. Um, I mean, Jordan Howard literally has 16 carries, 12 yards and three touchdowns this year. He should be dropped. Um, I think you can safely drop Matt Breida too. And if, uh, I mean, if, if they get, if Gaskin gets hurt, then I guess you pick up one of those two, but what's the point of even rostering, uh, either of them at this point? Deshaun Jackson. It's just a lot, of, just a lot of trash. Yeah. Uh, I would drop Deshaun Jackson. He, he's done nothing. 43%, uh, Preston Williams, 47% rostered. I think everybody was hoping or holding on to the beginning of his uh, previous year's performance really has not been able to do anything of consequence at all this season, averaging like five and a half points a game. He only had three targets this week when playing Seattle. I would drop Preston Williams like he was extremely hot. But yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, just a lot of uh, just a lot of like fringe guys. If if you look at your roster and you see them outside of like the top, I don't know, 45 at their position, um, I feel like you need to have like a significant reason to keep them on your team. And it's either got to be a lottery ticket or like a super high upside. Um, like <clears throat> the Brandon Cooks of the world, like, you know, clearly there is a wide receiver two upside there, but if he's not getting the ball, then what's the point of keeping him? Carry on Johnson rostered in more than half of all ESPN fantasy football leagues, four touches in consecutive weeks, 1.7 fantasy points in half PPR scoring 
should be dropped everywhere and you should not pick up anybody in that backfield because the Detroit Lions running back is not somebody that you want to roster unless and until there is a coaching regime change because yikes. Absolute yikes. Yeah. So just, you know, as we kind of go through waivers, uh, how about J.K. Dobbins? (laughs) <laughs> is is that somebody that that you would think about getting rid of? I mean, he's currently rostering seventy three percent of leagues. I have um, him too. He's, cl- he's clearly the third, the third running back at this point on their roster. I would say he's not though. I think Gus Edwards is used to kill time. Granted, they're going to kill a lot of time because they're going to be up in a lot of games. But like, he's an absolute lottery ticket. I. He would be an RB1 if Mark Ingram wasn't there in my mind. Like, if maybe not RB1, but like a high end RB2 anyway, if Mark Ingram wasn't there, I would maybe hold him. I would maybe, honestly, I would maybe hold him all the way up through the trade deadline. Yeah, I mean, and then cut him. He's one of those guys where. Where I would think about throwing him in a two for one just to try to sweeten the pie a little bit to get the better to get the best player in the deal um, in the trade. Because, I mean, he's yeah, he's got the high upside, but I mean, upside is just upside until like unless you get something out of him, which you're not. um, I mean, he's he's really close to being like. Just let him sit on somebody else's bench and rot there. How about Zach Moss? Currently rostered 56% of leagues. I know he's been out the last couple of weeks. Um, I mean, he had a touchdown week one. If you take the touchdown away, he would have had 4.2 points and 3.7 weeks in it. Or three, yeah, 3.7 points in week two. Um, I think he's borderline droppable as well. I think he's absolutely... I think he should be dropped because... Josh Allen is the running back that you want to own in that offense. Same with Cam Newton and the Patriots. You don't want another one of those running backs that's in the back there split in time. So I'm dropping Zach Moss. Um, But let's get into a split that I'm interested to hear your take on. What would you do with Cam Akers currently rostered in two thirds of leagues? He is running back 84 Cam Akers out multiple weeks, uh, 14 carries week one, and then the injury week two. He didn't really do anything week one. Do you think when he comes back, it's Daryl Henderson's job? I, th- I don't think we have any idea. I, I mean, they're very similar to the Patriots backfield to a certain extent, right? Like, we don't really know what it's going to look like. Um I mean, you were a, a Cam Akers guy before the season. I know you still think he's the best back there. Um, but, I mean, McVay said before the season they're just going to ride whoever the hot hand is. Um, I think you have to keep him, but you have to keep him, put him on the IR slot if you have one. But if you don't have an IR slot, I think you can drop him, honestly. Just let somebody else have him. And if he ends up being great, that's fine. But you have to try to win now to a certain extent. I am uh, dropping to, Cam Akers. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Sony Michelle is currently only rostered in 39.5% of leagues. Um, I, I know he's playing tomorrow night. We'll kind of see what happens against Kansas City. I feel like that's a little low for running back 36 coming into the week. Um, he did have 15 points against las vegas uh last last week week three um he is potentially somebody to have on your radar he looked really good um against las vegas and again only 40 percent rostered which is kind of disrespectful he looks extremely good i'm absolutely holding on to sony michelle for now Uh, i also think it will be interesting to see what that offense looks like without cam newton in it and how different it looks Uh, i think michelle could be looking at a larger workload because I don't think you're going to see uh, Cam. Not, I would agree. Cam won't be out there running the ball. 
What are you doing with Emmanuel Sanders? I think I'm probably holding on to him maybe at least until Michael Thomas comes back. Rostered in two-thirds of leagues, currently wide receiver 50. Uh, did have another uh, very good game today, actually. Six catches on nine targets for about 100 yards. Yeah, he um, he looked really good. Uh, and uh, Traquan Smith uh, had the two touchdowns. But if if either one of those would have gone to Sanders, then you're looking at a at a borderline wide receiver one day, um, or at least a solid wide receiver two day. Um, I, uh, I mean, I think Emmanuel has to be rostered. I think he's still going to be the other guy besides Michael Thomas there. Once he comes back, I know Traquan Smith had a, had a couple big games, you know, without Michael Thomas being there. Um, but I still think it ends up being Emmanuel Sanders. They talked a lot on the broadcast two weeks ago about Emmanuel Sanders and Drew Brees trying to get on the same page. Um, I mean, we kind of, I kind of wrote off Drew Brees. He looked pretty good today, 19 to 25 for 246. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think he should be rostered. I, in that offense, they should be able to support two wide receivers. Mm-hmm. I don't have anybody else. Is there anybody else jumping out at you? No, just, just drop the crap on your team that you're sick of looking at. Uh, you can do some fall <laughs> clinging. Uh, it's, it's weak. Like we're we're going into week five, uh, which is crazy. If you have a crappy team and you're sick of looking at some players, just uh, get rid of them. I will say, I this is gonna it's gonna be crazy to see what happens. I think this week, um, the NFL is evidently uh, considering postponing the whole entire season for a couple of weeks and then instituting some sort of bubble and uh moving the season to 12 games so that would be pure chaos but if we'll see what happens happens, yeah if that happens in my opinion um i i think you have to refund everybody's money back just personally um because how i mean how are they going to do that some teams have already had bye weeks um if you go to 12, like you don't, the, the thing that I'm personally concerned about just to kind of segue from, from everything is I don't want to be able to get to the fantasy football playoffs in week 14 and you have a COVID scare or let's say Cam Newton were to go out in week 14 and somebody in the playoffs has Cam Newton. How is that fair to anyone yeah. that... They have to that they have to find a back. They have to find a replacement for Cam Newton. I I don't think that's fair. Um, and so like I think that if you have not already talked about it in your leagues, I think you have to give cons- serious consideration that if this goes on for another two weeks, that hey, we're not sure that this even makes sense to keep doing other than just for fun. Um, because I. You want it to be fair, and if it's not fair, or I mean, if, yeah, right. Because some teams, a, yeah, some teams won't be as affected as others, and they're going to have a distinct advantage in week to week matchups and those things. Um, what I would say is, if your league decides to not refund people their money, I would just insist that you move to a points scored format, because if it is only a twelve game season then not everybody will have played everybody else in your league even at that point uh if assuming you're in a 12 team league or 14 16 team league um it's possible you know not everybody's played everybody else all the way through and so i would just go to a points four but even then obviously your teams that are missing people aren't gonna be up there you know i'm missing connor big ben this week and potentially Edward Zolaire if tomorrow night's game is postponed. So we'll uh yeah. We're all we're all feeling it right now. Yeah, I, I think it would be total total chaos, obviously, if they went to twelve weeks. And then you would start your you'd have to start your fantasy playoffs in week eight. Or no, sorry, you'd have to start them in week nine, right? Nine, ten, eleven. So that week 12, you wouldn't be dealing with teams that would be sitting players. So like, I don't even know if half your season. 
Do you think teams will be sitting players in week 12, though? Do you think that teams will be that far out ahead that they'll even be able to? I th- Maybe you sure. just do... The Seahawks, really? the Seahawks mode. I mean, the Seahawks are four and zero, right? So, uh, you go to twelve, you go to a twelve game season. They probably would clinch a playoff spot by week nine. Like if, they, you know if they're what? eight and one, then yeah, it's just weird. You know what's interesting though, too, is maybe teams sit players sooner rather than later. Like once they clinch, unless they're not. Once they're not playing for anything other than like clinching or whatever else anymore, just so that way they aren't playing football and they're less likely to contract COVID. Um, I guess I'm not, we haven't really seen any player to player transmission, at least that we know of through a game. Um, but yeah, I can't believe 20 Titans people are in, infected. Just absolutely unreal. It just blew my mind that uh, nobody on the Vikings tested positive this week, or yet anyway. Uh, hopefully that continues. But Yeah, I, when you're playing for money and you're playing for bragging rights, um, you just want it to be fair. And I, it would just imagine this exact same situation with Cam playoff like championship Sunday, one of the guys has Cam Newton and has to find a backup. I, I mean, to me, it almost makes sense. Do you consider just pulling the plug now? Um, but I think the answer to that's no. But it at least has to be on your radar. Uh, if if this continues, we we had a perfect first three weeks. There was one person, um, and now all of a sudden, week four it exploded. If it doesn't get better, um, or you know, if it gets worse before it gets better, then um, I think you need to consider calling it um, over the next couple of weeks. Just that's just my thinking out loud. Yeah, and it's gonna. I mean, it could very well affect people in the playoffs too. But I think it also is absolutely going to shape the play, the playoff race for fantasy managers trying to make the playoffs who were affected by COVID. You know. This week, maybe next week, you know, the the Derrick Henry p- roster people like that. He if he's out this week and next, it, and what do you do? And if they play a week eighteen game, what does that even mean? Like you're not going to go back and plug that score in for an earlier. Like that's just it's not useless. It's useless. So it's 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 almost yeah. like an injury, but without a designation that you have to keep on your bench. So thank you. ESPN and Yahoo for that. Yeah, this season, uh, if they th- there's no way that they don't play a complete season. How many weeks that takes? We have no idea. It yeah. could take 18 or 19 weeks. And if it takes 18 or 19 weeks, then I think you I don't think you can do fantasy football. Yeah, like I, I just straight up don't think you can do it. Um, because if not all teams would be playing during the fantasy playoffs that you have them scheduled then that's it just doesn't work yeah all right on that super uplifting note let's transition to our social media page where in honor of the titans you will see a titans themed sacco uh on youtube thank you while you're on youtube thank you for uh liking subscribing hitting the bell so you get all of our latest uh notifications for when we post new content which we try to post every tuesday and thursday again we're filming this on a sunday we might just go ahead and post it on monday who knows um find us everywhere we are at the ff sackos on twitter facebook instagram there is a tiktok the content is hot basically our social media coordinator uh does everything he can to post embarrassing <laughs> content of Alex being wrong. So um, it's great, actually. Uh, and with that, thank you guys for listening. Have a good night. I can't believe that somebody sent us a comment on Instagram that and they said, hey, guys, uh, we found your uh, me and my cousin were traveling and we found your podcast. Uh, we thought you guys were normal. Well, he hasn't. That was like the nicest thing that anybody's. He must not have watched the video where you were shaved your beard because holy moly. 
I need to do that again. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.